I was six years old when I started school. And the old timers always said we walked, we walked for three miles and the snow was deeper than the, than the fence, you know. Well, I walked too, but I only had a block. I only had a block to go, so they always said they walked three miles of snow with an eye, the fence was uphill both ways, you know. So I don't know how they figured that one out, but we only had about a block to school, you know, so we went home for lunch. And, and that time we got some pretty good snow. I know, I know one year it snowed. The, the roads were all snowed shut, and uh, there was a little country store down the road about a mile, and, and, and then nobody could get up. And, Sunday afternoon, I was a group come down around, come down past the house, shoveling this road open. It was about a dozen, and you know, a dozen guys with a shovel can pretty much move as little snow, you know. So they got, they got in front of the house. Dad grabbed and put his coat on and his boots and his shovel and went out and helped. They shoveled all the way down. It was a mile on that store, and they shoveled that road open. I went a long part of the way, but I got too cold. I couldn't even see out over the snowbank. And it got, I got too cold, I turned around and had it on. I figured I ain't, I ain't old enough for the crap. You know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, growing up my, on the farm with kids, you know, we had, we had a lot of fun. We got in trouble too, but we had a lot of fun. We, we didn't have games to play or anything. We made our own, we, we made our own games. We we were never bored. We were never bored. You know, kids now have everything they need, but they're still bored, you know. <laughs> but we, we never never got bored. We always found something to do. If it was mischief, we got in there a lot of trouble too. But yeah, I know my grandpa. My grandpa, he was, he was a he, he was a nice guy, you know. But we picked on him a lot. Like he chewed tobacco, he chewed tobacco, you know. And anyhow, when he came in for lunch, he'd take his tobacco water out and lay it on the windowsill because back then tobacco was like ten cents a pack, you know. And ten cents it was ten cents. So he'd take it out and lay it on the windowsill. When he'd done that, he'd get the pepper box go out the front door and go back and pepper his tobacco one, you know. After he ate lunch, he'd come out and get his tobacco. <laughs> he didn't keep it in there too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we, we, we deviled him to no end, but he was, he was a good natured guy. But he played fiddle. He only played, I guess, three or four songs, he, but he played them well because I mean, that's probably the only three he had learned all his life, you know. But um, he chewed the back of, He chewed the back and he slobbered a lot. He slobbered a lot and then the juice would run down the fingerboard on his fiddle. And it looked like it was varnished, you know. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, no, I've had, he, was, he was a good old boy. He was, he was, he was sort of a, a couple of years there, he was a constable, you know, and even his old pictures, he looked sort of like Wyatt Earp or one of them old boys from the OK Corral, you know. <laughs> but um, anyhow, he he was a good, he was a good boy. You know, another thing, I was a little kid. I was about five years old, and he had a Model T Ford. And Model T Ford, and we were. He took us somewhere. I don't know where it was in, in, in New York or somewhere. My mom was along, and Dad was working, and I'm standing on the floorboard looking out the window like this. We're going down the dirt road. The front tire ran off and went down the road ahead of us. The tire got home before we did. <laughs> Almost. No, but we weren't quite home yet, and he stopped them. He stopped and, uh, and put the tire back on, you know. 
But it seems I can remember it just like it happened yesterday. And it's funny how stupid stuff like that can stick in your head, you know. But I can still see that tear going down the, down the road ahead of it. But, and then, you know, Bob Happy was there. He had, they had somebody the other, he brought us a goat home. He brought us a little goat, a little billy goat. And I can still see that goat, and, and, and we had more fun with that goat. We built a little cart, and I we harnessed up the little cart, you know, and we took a ride in that thing. Now, we had to drag him away from the house, but when you got him away from the house and had it toward, the, toward home, you couldn't hold him back because he was going home, you know. <laughs> he would take a pretty good ride on that, on that old wooden cart. And and finally we we had that goat best part of the year. No, I wasn't. I had six months, and Mom used to always hang her laundry out, you know. And one day she had her laundry hanging out, and the, the sheets hanging on there, and this goat was out there pulling these sheets off and chewing on it, you know. And and next day the goat was gone. I don't know. <laughs> but I was in my mom was talking to dad that night and I, I I thought I heard a little bit of his goat mention, but the goat disappeared the next day because she wasn't gonna have that. And you know what? They always told me a goat eats tin cans, but they don't. Did you ever hear that? A goat eats tin cans. Don't believe that because they don't need tin cans. We tied that goat out in the yard and put tin cans around, we counted them cans. And that week later, them cans were still all there. So that tells me that goat don't need tin cans. That was, anyhow, yeah, we had goats, we had rabbits, we had chickens, we had pigs, we had everything in the farm. And you know, during the Depression, a lot of people were standing in soup, soup lines. You know, they had food was scarce. And it, it, it's almost remind you of that now the people are, people are hungry, you know. But back then, with they were starving, it was people standing in line for a bowl of soup, you know. And uh, and uh, being on the farm there, well, we we never had that kind of a problem, you know. Because we grew everything, you had all the vegetables, the meat, and whatever we had. The only thing we didn't have was money, and we didn't need that. We didn't need much of that. You used to take two dozen eggs down to the store and bring, trade them in for groceries. And, and still have a couple of cents left, you know. But we, it, was, it, was, it was good, except for the the bill that he owed, he just bought the farm about three years before that hit. And he he paid the, uh, they, they told him, he, he wanted to give him the farm back, the bank. He wanted the bank to take it back, but they wouldn't because they had everybody else's too, you know. They, and they told him just to make a little interest if you can that it's going to get better, and which it did, you know, eventually it did 10 or so years later. It got better, and, and uh, he often said he paid it off once in principal and twice in interest. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, uh,